Hello again, uh, you watching The Lead on ENCATS TV Channel 43. I'm Dan Moyani. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and if you're not aware, we are continuing now with our discussion about the legacy of F.W. de Klerk. As you know, the president, uh, the last president of apartheid South Africa, passed away yesterday at the age of 85 following a battle with asbestos cancer. I'm joined by the executive director of the F.W. de Klerk Foundation, Dave Stewart, and the PAC president, Mzwanele Nyonso, and uh, Father Michael Lepsley, an anti-apartheid activist who lost both his hands when he was sent a letter bomb in Zimbabwe in April 1990 by apartheid death squads at the time that de Klerk was head of state. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for continuing to be with us and uh, welcome back. I appreciate your patience. This will be the last part of our discussion with you this afternoon on the legacy of F.W. de Klerk. Now, a number of things are being said. The PAC uh, leader here having a very clear position that overriding everything else is all about the land and, and justice. And uh, Father Lepsley, if I may get you, yours is around that white South Africans have to acknowledge and recognize that they had a privilege, uh, they have a privileged past and they may still be benefiting from that privileged past and that they must accept that apartheid was a crime against humanity and find a way of redressing that and making sure that we address inequality in this country. Dave Stewart, you are saying the majority of Africans in the center have to, work, have to work together. Now, in this last part, I just want us to focus on how can we use this lesson of this divisive legacy of F.W. de Klerk to move forward? How can we really move forward? Or are we going to be stuck? Uh, Mr. Nyonso, what do you think? What should happen for you to move on to say, yes, de Klerk was what he was. He was part of the transition. That's a historical fact. Whether he was forced or not is, is, is a matter that people are discussing. But Father Lepsi is saying he had no choice, basically. How do we move f forward, uh, Mr. Nyonso? Moving forward, then, the trophy is the land the land must be returned to its people. And, and by land, we don't mean the soil only. We don't mean agricultural land. We mean, we mean minerals. We mean Jonas Beck Stock Exchange. We mean the seas. We mean underneath, beneath the sea. We mean that Jonas Beck Stock Exchange. We mean the space in Azania. We mean, we mean, we mean the Reserve Bank. We mean everything. Once we do that, then the justice will be served. And, and remember, the term non-racialism, I share it with Father, Father Lepsi, non-racialism term, term came with PAC, Sobukwe himself in 1959, when everybody was talking about multi-racialism. They were even ridiculing Sobukwe, saying this term non-racialism was not even on the English dictionary. And Sobukwe wanted us to, he even said, the shape of your nose and the texture of the hair is not going to count in a new Africa, Africa reborn, Africa rejuvenated. Remember, we wanted, Sobukwe said, we are all human beings. We all belong in one human race. We, it's, this Africa is for Africans and Africans for humanity and humanity for God. But truth is, they, they, never, they, they never accepted Sobukwe's vision. Now, all of a sudden, they are saying we must be free, there's democracy, but the land is still with them. The trophy is the land. Once we have land, there will be justice. We'll live in peace. Our people will, will, will get out of poverty, and our people will be able to call their souls their own. Because once you have your land, you have dignity. Once you have your land, you are rich. Once you have your land, you have everything. You have connection with God. You have connection with your ancestors. You have connection. It's, it's spiritual. The land question is not a so, joke. It's not an agricultural reform. It is spiritual. But, but, we are connected. But, yeah, but, 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 Mr. Nyonso, our constitution today uh, gives all of us, provides all of us with certain rights. Uh, how do you propose, I mean, how can things be, be, be retained when people who own some of those things you've mentioned, like the JSE, like mines and stuff, uh, they have property rights, for example, under the current constitution? That's where our problem started in this current constitution. The, cur the current constitution that is renowned as the most beautiful constitution in the world, and yet no country in the world wants to use the very same constitution. The current constitution that keeps our people landless in the land of their forefathers. The current constitution that still today keeps aplacadas behind bars for fighting for freedom. Pangubane is still in, in prison in Hoshimamburu for the operations he did before 
before 1994, applicators are still in jail. They are being kept by this so-called renowned, current, renowned, beautiful constitution of the world. This constitution that keeps us in the dark, the country is in the dark. That constitution keeps us with load shedding. This constitution keeps so many Africans living outside without food on the table. This constitution so, keeps so, the so you would, of this you would country propose, yeah. Mr. So you, what, yes. basically what I'm hearing is that the constitution will have to change so that those Definitely. things that you want about the land will do. But, but in terms of the Definitely. legacy, in terms of the legacy, I mean, currently we have this constitution. Uh, 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 Father uh, Lapsley, I mean, we live in a multi-party constitutional democracy. Mr. Nyonso, very passionate and very clear that uh, it's not the constitution that's going to work to make sure that the future is different. How do you respond to that? Well... I think, firstly, I want to say that formal politics alone is not going to transform South Africa. Um, we saw that with the millions and millions of people who stayed away from voting. So we need a, a new mobilization, particularly of civil society, a new national conversation to say, OK, yes, we have the Constitution, but unless there is a form of redress, redistribution of wealth we won't be able to live in peace there will be more and more violence young people become more and more desperate now and, and one saw that in a sense with the insurrection the way that very poor people rose up out of their anger and frustration so that's a it's a warning sign uh to all of us but i think we also need a different conversation um which the clerk's passing provides us with and and it came out when the clerk has infamous statement about apartheid not being a crime against humanity, the depth of woundedness that still characterizes South Africa. Um, and unless we can deal with our wounds psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually, we won't be able to live in peace. So we need a different kind of economics, a different kind of politics, but we also need to deal with how we feel about the past, not just what we think about. If we don't deal with our woundedness, we won't be able to create a different kind of society. So Dave, it's not either or, yeah. but both it's and. Both. It's both and. Okay, I get you. A, a new conversation. Dave, Dave Stewart, what are your thoughts? Well, I think we can all agree on the need for dramatic development in South Africa. It, the country is the most unequal society in the world. If the, if the travel is it's more unequal than it was in 1994, we've been going in the wrong direction. There is unacceptable poverty in the country, with almost 40% of people really unemployed. There is an inadequate education system. Our municipalities are failing. All of these are subjects that should be of great concern to all South Africans. But do you and agree? Do you get, agree? Sorry, do you yeah. agree with Father Lepsis suggesting that the death of F.W. Clegg provides us with an opportunity to have a new national conversation about, for, for example, acknowledging our, the depth of our woundedness as a nation, particularly of the African people? I think that every time we look at failing institutions in our country. Every time we have something like the July riots in KZN, we need to examine ourselves. F.W. de Klerk's death, I don't think, is a milestone on this road. But what is certain is that South Africa must turn around. Father Lapsley is a socialist. He thinks that the solution is to do what socialists have done everywhere else, where everywhere is, it's happened, it's failed. Um, Mr. Nyonzo, it belongs to a racial, okay. tiny racial fraction party. I think that the, the challenge is for us in the middle to really get together and work out how do we increase wealth? How do we grow Mr. wealth? How do we address these problems of unemployment? Okay. Mr. Stewart, thank you. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, sorry to cut in there. I, I've just run out of time. I wish I had more time this hour, but unfortunately we work according to this clock that gives us an hour. And I really want to thank you for your time. Uh, your, your points, uh, 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 PAC President Mzwane Lenyunso have been very heard loud and clear. Father Michael Lefsley, also your thoughts and reflections have been had. And uh, Dave Stewart uh, of the FW Declare Foundation as we reflect on this.
this divisive legacy of F.W. Clegg. Hopefully, out of all these different strands and views that are being expressed since his death yesterday, South Africa, we will be able to find some way to take the country forward. But I think what Father Lefsi said about our depth of woundedness is something that needs to be acknowledged. And the white South Africans have to acknowledge that apartheid was a crime against humanity. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your time here. The second hour of the lead will continue in a short while.